Hello and welcome to the first, as well as the first Christmas themed episode of The Rundown. Today on The Rundown, Livingston has canceled their iconic Christmas parade and jingle bell run, but our county has some new COVID safe activities to celebrate the holiday season. We bring you an exclusive interview with Dr. Drake about the long awaited Christmas break. The new COVID vaccine debuts in the United States, but at what cost? And when will small towns such as ours begin to see the effects of this vaccine? All of this and more on today's episode of The Rundown. Down, down, down. Uh. Macy Hill is here with your upcoming campus news. Hi guys, it's Macy Hill and this is your LHS campus news. Firstly, basketball is kicking into full gear with games usually every Tuesday and Friday. During the break, however, games will only commence on Tuesdays. Soccer is also starting back and both girls and boys have a game on Saturday, January 2nd at Huntsville. After the break, soccer will regularly have games every Monday and Thursday, so come on out and support your teams. Student council will also be starting after the break. See Mr. Kurz for applications and be on the lookout for the first meeting. The cheerleaders and mascot will be traveling to Dallas to compete in the UCA cheerleading competition on January 14th and 15th. They have been working hard all year and we wish them the best of luck. The first UIL competition is January 8th, the first Friday we come back from the break. Most of the events will be held virtually, but contact your coach for specific details. I'm Macy Hill and that's a wrap for your campus news. Thanks Macy. Be sure to keep checking back with us to hear all your campus news. Next up, a segment called What's Up LHS, where your favorite teachers will give you some wonderful advice to survive your high school career. This week's teacher is biology teacher, Mr. Sanford. What's up LHS, this is Mr. Sanford and I'm coming at you with the advice from a teacher for this week. My advice this week is spend less time on your phones and more time getting fresh air and exercise. Thanks, Sanford. Love you. Now, time for some world news. The first United States approved COVID-19 vaccine will be making its debut within the next few days. This vaccine developed by Pfizer, a pharmaceutical company, is being shipped out to 636 predetermined hospitals nationwide. An estimated 2.9 million doses will be distributed within the first week. That number is expected to increase significantly in the following weeks to as much as 40 million doses by the end of 2020. While none are certain, most people believe that the first vaccines will be distributed to healthcare workers and then to severely at risk senior adults. Trials have shown the vaccine to be up to 95% effective. Common side effects of the vaccine include pain, fatigue, headaches, chills, and muscle pain. It will most likely be months, if not longer, before the vaccine begins to find its way into small towns. But all citizen, citizens should be on the lookout for this upcoming vaccine. And now for your local news. The hometown Christmas parade and Jingle Bell Run have been canceled due to COVID-19, much to the town's dismay. However, our town has found some unique ways to enjoy the holiday season. Santa came to Miss Effie's cottage December 12th, and while no children were allowed to sit in Santa's lap this year, they were encouraged to bring their letters to drop in Santa's special mailbox and take pictures. Downtown Treasures is selling Christmas decor, and Homegrown is selling a variety of Christmas shirts. This holiday season, it's important to find ways to feel close to the people you love, and we thank the City of Livingston for providing new and safe ways to celebrate. And now, Savannah Ruiz and Angel Valenzuela with The Roar, a pop culture segment to catch you up on all the latest. Hi guys, I'm Angel. And I'm Savannah. And this is The, the Roar. Roar. January 26th marks one year after the death of Kobe Bryant, an NBA legend, a father, a husband, and so much more. And while no one could have predicted the fatal helicopter malfunction, we remember and honor the lives led by Kobe, his daughter, and the seven other passengers. Olivia Jade, daughter of Lori Loughlin and Mosimo Giannulli, finally broke her silence about the heavily publicized college admission scandal that has been circling her family for the past year. Beginning in fall of 2019, Olivia and her older sister Bella received harsh criticism surrounding their claims of not being fully aware of what was going on. 
when she was applying to college. When both her parents were sentenced to months in prison, Olivia finally began to speak out upon the issue. She says, I think that hasn't been super public is that there's no justifying or excusing what happened. But I think what is so important to me is to learn from the mistake, not to now be shamed and punished and never given a second chance. Because I'm 21, I feel like I deserve a second chance to redeem myself, to show that I've grown. On December 8th, the International Olympic Committee announced that breakdancing is an official Olympic sport and we will be making its debut in 2024 at the Paris Olympic Games. 16 B-boys and 16 B-girls will battle in head-to-head -head battles to compete for the gold. Among breakdancing, the committee also added skateboarding, sports climbing, and surfing to the list of the Olympic sports. That's all for this week, and we'll see you next time on The, the Roar. Roar. Thanks, Savannah and Angel. Looking forward to next time. Now, for Feature Teacher with Johanna Proctor, where we put a spotlight on an educator that works diligently to provide for their students. This week, Mr. Carr, a former police officer and the robotics sponsor, as well as the teacher for many tech classes. Which job do you find more challenging, a cop or a teacher? That's a tough question. I think uh, teacher is being the hardest job. Um, you have so many people depending on you to get a quality education. Uh, you have a lot of minds that you're trying to enrich and make sure they're getting the information that they need to succeed in your program. And uh, it's just a lot of things to keep up with. So I believe teaching is the hardest profession but I believe it's the most rewarding to see everyone um, get on the same page, things come together and, and see the light bulb come on when they finally get what they're trying to learn. Where did you learn the skills in order to teach robotics? Um, the skills I learned to teach robotics, I didn't go to school for robotics. Um, it was just something that I thought was neat, of something, in, something I was intrigued with, uh, with NASA, other things like that. So four years ago, I decided to uh, put a Lego robotics team together. This was after researching and, and going to a training through TCEA and was able to get four kids together that kind of had the same idea and the same desire. Uh, was able to kind of pick up uh, programming and building robots kind of through that introduction. Uh, from there, it grew up to a more sophisticated program like we have now, uh, where it requires more detailed programming, more detailed building. Um, for the training, I learn stuff every day from the kids and online, so I'm constantly learning, and the best education for robotics is to jump in and do it. How did you become a teacher? How did I become a teacher? Well, first off, this is a, not a job I saw myself doing 10, 15 years ago. Um, one day on the way home from work, driving back and forth to Houston for several years as a tech support uh, representative for our company, I decided why am I driving two hours a day to work, being away from my family, doing technology when I can teach it at home. Um, so that inspired me to go get my teacher certification and um, which allowed me to come to the school district and actually teach technology instead of working in it all day. So now I have the greater reward of teaching the younger generation to fix problems that our world is now having with technology. Bonus question, what is your favorite holiday and why? My favorite holiday is of course Christmas, like every other kid. Uh, my internal kid, I love the lights, I love the decoration, I love the, the feeling of being around family, seeing the love throughout the year, uh, exchanging gifts, and just being with the ones you love. So Christmas has to be it, and seeing the joy of Christmas morning on my kids' faces. Thank you, Joanna. Can't wait to see what teacher you'll highlight next. Now an exclusive message from Dr. Drake about the upcoming Christmas break. All right, good morning LHS. Just wanted to send you off for the holidays. We're very excited about uh, getting a little break and, and getting out of here. But, you know, just a couple reminders. First of all, have fun, be safe. Um, you know, we still got the pandemic going on, but, you know, enjoy time with your family. Uh, but, you know, when you go out and Help the community to stay safe, so wear your mask and do those things so that you can start back on the first day of school. That way we don't get a report that you've close exposure or uh, you tested positive yourself. So we want you and your family to stay safe and just have a Merry Christmas. Uh, we look forward to getting back to next semester, getting back to a little more normalcy, and just having a great, break, uh, great time when we return and finishing off this great school year uh, just as strong as we started. Thanks, Dr. Drake. 
Can't wait for this break, but anyway, that's all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed what we have, and we hope even more that you'll tune in next time. I'm Mallory Wester. And I'm Drew Dunson, and this has been the first episode of The Rundown.